All right. So we're going to complete this. Uh, grace is greater than. Um, complete this uh, series, and then we get into whatever God wants. Well, he's always doing whatever he wants to do, but this is the end of this series. And then next week I talk about band-aids, and then, then I'm not sure the direction. So pray for me, because I love that when God just kind of does, gives me a, a, a direction, but then it's always scary when he, he uh, gives me a mystery. So I'm not sure where I'm going after this. I know Band-Aids is next, but that's about it. So it kind of got a little bit sporadic during September, but that's about it. So I'm a little nervous. I like to be planned out. If anybody knows me at all, I like planning. Um, so God's great, grace is greater than your circumstances. Do you understand that we all have circumstances, don't you? We, we do. We have good circumstances. We have bad circumstances. We have past circumstances. We have current circumstances. <clears throat> That's what we live in, right? Circumstances and obstacles will attempt to drown out God's grace in our lives, but we must trust in Him anyways, no matter what. Amen? Amen. If you don't preach with me, I preach longer, so... Amen? Amen? So, when you think about it, I've been to a lot of funerals in my lifetime. Anybody with me? Have you ever looked at, uh, at a funeral gra uh, a headstone and you see the, the beginning date when they were born and the ending date when they passed away, right? And then you see this great little thing called a dash. Do you know what that represents? Their life. Isn't that awesome? That little dash represents everything. All the years of their life. Yeah. It, I, it blows my mind. The dates are longer than the dash. But all that dash represents everything that ever happened in one's life. All the circumstances, all the good, the bad, the ugly happens in that dash. I, I'm just amazed because that doesn't make much sense. I think they should have a picture or a video camera that just kind of shows the good stuff, right? Because... You don't want anyone to say, hey, this guy was a dirtbag. Mm -hmm. You want to say, see someone that says all the good things of that person. The, the dash is everything that's good. But I've been to enough funerals that not everything goes as planned. Not everything said about that person. I've been to a couple funerals that, that I had a great, great grandma show up at a funeral where she kind of went crazy in the middle of the funeral. Because she thought... She deserved recognition. Circumstances. Sometimes circumstances is not always the most positive. But we have to understand that we need to rely on God's grace. God's perfection. But when we look at that dash in one's life, we can also look at God's forgiveness and love in that dash. God's grace. So this morning I'm going to look at a couple things to conclude this series. This point number one is thankfulness helps us to trust God and acknowledge His grace in our life. First Thessalonians 5 8 is probably the most one unique one and the most unique verses in the Bible <coughs> that really speaks to us and one of the most difficult verses that we can look at. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It says give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. Come on. Yes. When things are going really well, we're good at that, right? If things are going awesome in your life, you're like, thanks God, that's really great. Thanks for everything going great. Thank you, God. That's great. But if things start going the wrong way, who's going to have to give thanks? Let's be honest here. We're not always going to give thanks, are we? That's right. In fact, what are we usually doing? We're usually whining, right? <laughs> but it says here in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that we're supposed to do what? Give thanks in all circumstances. 
for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me illustrate this for you. In, in Jacksonville, Illinois, I came home from a youth event, and I want to tell you a little secret. If you drink a lot of Mountain Dew, stop. Because Mountain Dew is the highest cause of kidney stones. Surprise. I found out that the wrong way. I came home from a youth event where I used to drink two liters like a can of pop. And so I came home and I'm sitting in the bathroom crying out to Jesus. And my wife goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm sweating and she goes, you're going to the hospital. And we called the, one of the nurses in our church over and, and they were watching the kids. This is the first time ever in my life that I've seen my wife break every speed limit in this town because she was breaking laws left and right. We only had one baby. I was pregnant. Were you? Yeah. Okay. And so I decided, whatever, I can't remember that far back. Anyway, so we got into the emergency room. I collapsed in the emergency room because I wanted to ride in a wheelchair. And, and I'm praying in tongues because I could not pray any other way. And this guy from India says, what are you saying? I says, I'm praying to God because at that moment I was in such pain. And so they gave me a bunch of medicine. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. Sometimes there's nothing more than to do but to pray. The very fact is, I wasn't thanking God for that. I was praying to God to get me through. There's a big difference. We have to understand that sometimes giving thanks is also praying God to get you through. We have to understand that giving thanks, even in the, in the desperate situations, can get you through. Let me give you a little explanation. And, and I, the author of the book gives the best explanation. God takes complaining personally because complaining overlooks the greatness of God's grace we have received. It overlooks His grace in our lives. Sometimes our complaining overlooks all the grace that God has ever given to us. He has given us so much grace, hasn't He? And when we get complaining, God, you didn't do it just the way we thought you should do, and we start complaining, and it overlooks his greatness. See, if you can turn the death of Jesus into our salvation, he can do just about anything with whatever we're going through right now. If you think that we can't give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for your, you in Christ Jesus, come on, church. I know I'm not perfect at that, and I'm not expecting you to, but we should do our best to put that into practice. Amen. And you're like, Pastor, I know you're not perfect at that. I'm not saying I am, but I'm going to put do my very best at putting that into practice. Amen. That's right. Because it is something that we need to understand, that I want to learn about God's grace a whole lot more than my complaining. Because, you know, the, the children of Israel could have got out of the wilderness a whole lot faster if they would stop complaining. Yes. Amen? Amen? Number two, we're able to receive God's grace only to the extent we're able to recognize our need for it. Right. <coughs> Listen to 2 Corinthians 11, 21 to 23, but then we're going to drop down in chapter 12. It says... To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. Whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also to dare to boast about it. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been more exposed to death again and again. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Or because of these surpassing great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, 
For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that in Christ's power may rest on me. That is, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecutions, in dif difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, the more we are able to acknowledge our weakness, the greater our opportunities to experience God's power in our lives. When, he is, when we're weak, He is strong. When we realize that our reliance has to be on Him. You know, there's many times that we can say we're all these things, but when it really comes down to it, does not God create who we are? Yes. He creates us. There's a major understanding that there's a lot of people say, hey, I'm all this. I know a lot of people that have these gigantic churches. And they are self-created people. You know, there's a very few people that I, I recognize that that have not become, um, I just lost my train of thought. Whew, never mind. I'll take a different road. Huh? Maybe. Our weakness. When we're weak, he is strong. In the midst of our weakness, we have to rely on Christ. He has our strength to get through, right? Right. Have you ever realized when you're weak, you try to fix it yourself? But then when you try to fix it yourself, you, it takes you longer to get through it? But when you say, God, I need your strength, it's a little bit easier to get through it? And you ask God to get wisdom for it? Acknowledging weakness invites God's presence and power into your lives. Acknowledging it. Saying that, hey, God, I can't do this. There's moments in my life that I can't do things. How many of you know that you can't do everything that you, you can do, right? Right? I know I can. There's moments in my life that there's things I cannot do. I want to do everything. Right? There's things that there's things you cannot do. I was I was laughing a little bit. I went and seen Rob the other day. And you can share this with Rob or he'll listen to it later. Rob's a great guy. He's he's very um, um, ADHD. He says it himself. And, and Nancy will say it for agree with me. Um, I go shopping with Rob ever so often when he and he brings to-do lists. And I showed up at Rob's house, and he's digging a ditch for their their uh, their garden. It's amazing. It's it's great, and, and he'll probably still be digging that ditch when we get. No, it should be done by the time we get out there for September. He tells me it's going to be done, <coughs> but he's doing it by hand. Do you know digging a ditch by hand is very difficult, especially with clay in the ground? And, and I walked out there jokingly because I, I, I showed up and I says, man, are, are you building a, 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 a grave site for your pastor? Because it is a deep ditch. And, and he was laughing because he has to go even wider because he has to put a T in this thing so he can do some more. And he just laughed a little bit. He says, now i got to put a, another faucet over here. And I'm like, okay, so... What's your idea? Because he always, if you know Rob, he's always adding one more thing. It's not just, hey, I'm just going to simply do this. It's one more thing. And you'd say, hey, Rob, do you think you're just going to do it just like this? No, it's one more thing. And you tell Rob, do you think you're able to do this? No, it's, it's just one more thing. You can't tell Rob he can't do this because he knows he can He's going to figure it out. I appreciate that because he will figure it out. Yeah. 
you look at me, I'm not going to figure it out. I'll just find somebody else to do it for me. I'm weak. Rob's a thinker. And he'll tell you he's a thinker. And he will think about it until he can't think anymore. Weakness and strengths. I sat down with him the other day because he, he's a great thinker because he helps lead the, the men's Bible study on Friday, Friday mornings. And he writes out, okay, when I do a book study, and you guys know this when I do it, I actually read the chapter and I take the end notes and I highlight my notes. Rob actually does notes. He types up the notes. Rob doesn't do halfway. He does, I'm going to do a, he can do study guides for me. And I sat down with him on, on the day that I went out there, Thursday I think it was, and I says, uh, Rob, I really appreciate what you do. You really help me out because I'm, I'm well prepared when you send me those notes. He says, really? You think I do a good job? I says, yeah, I think you do a really good job. I think you're really gifted in that. He goes, you really think so? Sometimes we have to understand that even in our weakness, when we don't think we're gifted in that, someone needs to come along to encourage us. And you might need that, but the Holy Spirit, Jesus will come along to encourage you even in your weakness to say that you're doing a really good job. See, in this, remember at the beginning of this passage of Scripture, he's saying, I am one of those, I am that, I am that. And then at the very end, he says, I delight my weakness in insults and in hardship and persecution in difficulties, for I am weak, then I am strong. In the midst, recognizing in your weakness, then you're strong. You rely on Christ. Because I'm sure that when Rob started that ditch, he was realizing, hey, this is going to be pretty easy. And then all of a sudden, he got in the clay and it gets a little harder. See, life is kind of like that. Sometimes we get the surface stuff. And then we get a little bit deeper and it gets a little bit difficult. See, some of our circumstances are like that. We get through the little surface stuff and it gets a little bit harder. And then it gets a little bit harder when someone sees a little bit deeper in our life because we like the surface talks, right? We don't want anybody in deep into our mess to see our weaknesses. But when someone gets deep in our stuff, that's our weaknesses. But then all of a sudden someone can come along and really work with us and talk through us and help us. I just kind of changed the subject on us a little bit, didn't I? Because in our weaknesses, we become strong. Because people can help us. God can help us through those struggles and those weaknesses. Because I'm, I, I, God just kind of spoke to me in that, in, that, in that dish that Rob is digging. There's many layers to dirt. There's clay. And sometimes in our, in our clay of our life, it's very difficult. It's the hard stuff. that we. I don't know why I'm sharing this. It's, it's that hard stuff that we don't want anyone to get into. Because we don't want anyone to see the hard stuff in our lives. But God's grace is bigger than the hard stuff in your lives. That's right. But we're scared to let anybody in that hard stuff. But you know what? Rob had to use a pick to get through that. And it hurts that ground. I'm sure if you're a tree hugger, you're like, that's hurting the ground. But you know what? When Rob gets done with that ground, it'll be just fine. When you get through the tough stuff in your life, and someone gets through and you're talking to somebody and you're finding and you're finding that confidant and, and you give your stuff to the Holy Spirit, you're going to be fine too. Right. But God's grace and your weakness. I find the stuff in my weakness at the altar. I can lay it there. But I also find myself when I'm talking to, whether it's a counselor that I may have or, or an armor bearer that I may have or someone that I know that I, I can talk to, that's where I find my weakness. And yeah, now you're thinking, man, I've tried that before and I've been hurt because I've trusted those people and they have broken confidence with me. It's a hard thing to find those people you can trust. 
that's that's those risks. Those are those those are those hard risks that we as human beings, because there are those untrusting people that are out there that you don't know if you can really trust. But can I tell you, those are the those are the face steps that I can't tell you how to step out and trust those people. You have to pray about it. And God will reveal who you can trust. I don't know why I'm talking about this totally off subject today, but God's grace is bigger, and I'm going to keep on talking about that. But I believe that this morning, find somebody, if you're in that situation right now, and you're, you need help, there's somebody out there that you can trust that God can break through that hardness yep. and talk to. I don't know who that's for. I'm totally off subject, but I believe it's for somebody. Let me get back to it. All right, number three. We must trust God's goodness even when life is difficult. Because life does get difficult. Life gets rough, life gets hard, life gets messy, life is crazy in the midst of junk. Romans 8, 18 to 30, it says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with, our, with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed for the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subject it, subjected to it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the, its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we also ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groans inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. The redemption of our <coughs> bodies, for in the hope we were saved, but hope that is, in, is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we hope for what is patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wor wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for those for the good of those who love him who has been called according to those, his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he, he also glorified. See, Paul wants these Christians to understand that no matter how desert things may seem, in the moment God loves and grace will win the day. So basically, here's a few ways that we can know that God's grace is working in the middle of a pain that brings about goodness in our life. You can know God's grace is working in your pain to draw you closer to Jesus. In the midst of your pain, drawing you close to Jesus. It's, it, it, and no matter what you're going through, drawing you close to Jesus. Having you draw close to Jesus in the midst of whatever circumstances, drawing you close to Jesus. Knowing that God's grace is there. The second thing you can know that God's grace is working in your pain to make you more like Jesus. It's, it's important to understand that. We all go through circumstances. See, the difficulty is 
holding on to God's grace in circumstances can push us to complain or it can push us to under God's grace. See, our pride pushes us to deny our need for God's forgiveness. Our suffering attempts to drown us out of God's, the Almighty's voice. Yet we must trust the, God, the grace of God. We're fighting that it is mightier than the obstacle. It is a never-ending and unstoppable. See, God, grace, God's grace is greater than any circumstances. God's grace is greater than any hurt. God's grace is greater than any past. God's grace is greater. It is grace that we have been saved. It is God's grace. And when we understand how God's grace is greater, it's amazing to understand. And that's why I believe that God has brought us to this series for us to understand that God's grace is greater and that we are saved by grace. Amen? Yes. That we are saved by grace, each one of us. Remember at the beginning of the series, I talked about it, that it was by grace that we have been saved. Each one of us. Each one of us were saved by grace. And at that moment, talked about grace is greater than your circumstances. Greater, grace is greater than your hurt. Grace is greater than your past. So when we understand that, grace is greater. And we can do many things when we under that God, under that grace. So I just want to pray for you. I hope this series has been helpful for you. hope it encouraged you. hope it's spoken to your life. And I'm excited what God's going to speak into your life in the next couple months, couple weeks, because I don't know. So God's got a better plan than I do. So let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight.